Even though we worked hard to maintain a clean edge, we can rarely be 100% successful, and so there are some cleanup that needs to take place. This cleanup is best done after a full night of the resin setting up. Usually I'll try my best to time these things so that I'll spend the day doing everything that we've done up until this step, then I'll go home for the night and let the resin fully set overnight before starting at this point the next morning. The resin has a tendency to act a little weird and crumbly unless fully set, and I prefer not to take any chances with this stuff. Having spent around 6-8 to eight hours to get to this point in the casting process, I think it's best to just be patient and work within the material constraints presented to you. I will first use a metal spatula to scrape off excess material that got up onto the edge of the silicone. The spatula is not sharp enough to deal with anything but loose pieces of resin, and I don't try to push it either. A rasp along this edge is probably a little bit overkill since the sculpture is so small, and so instead I'll use sandpaper to take the edge down a level to the level of the silicone. Any resin along the edge that sits higher than the silicone wall is going to potentially cause issues with registration when we close to mold, which we don't want, of course. Once I've done a once-over around the entire edge, I'll brush out any dust or debris from the inside of the mold and the silicone edge. Debris inside the mold, especially the side that we are going to flip over, has a chance to impede in the mold closing properly. You can just imagine if a loose piece of resin landed on the edge or something silly like that. We wouldn't be able to get the proper registration, of course. At this point, we are just test fitting the mold halves to see if they are going to fit together the right way when we close them for real. Before we actually close the mold, we are going to mix a batch of thick resin and apply that. And if the mold doesn't close properly and there's resin setting up and resin inside the mold, then we'll have a huge mess to clean up. So it's better to make sure we have a perfect fit before proceeding to do this by, by test fitting the mold halves together. I'll usually just pick the lightest half of the mold and flip that over. Since the mold is so small here, it doesn't really matter too much. Because I have an open edge mold, which means the silicone seam is visible from the outside, I can easily see if the two halves register together as they should. Most of these mold pieces have multiple openings as well, which is really nice since it allows me to inspect the inside of the mold to see whether or not they are closed properly. If they don't, I identify the area that's causing a problem, open the mold again and work some more in that area, sanding away a bit more resin before performing another test fit. The major advantage and reason I use an open-edged mold design is so that I can see the silicone seam line and determine whether or not the two halves are registrating back together correctly. Smaller mold pieces with large openings allows me to see inside the mold and confirm if the two halves are fitting together there as well. The inside obviously being the most important. Having a mold with no access to the silicone seam and no access to the interior seems to me to be asking for trouble, because there would be no way to confirm whether or not you close the mold properly. 
So in order to make sure that we get a strong edge where the two halves of the mold meet, and to make sure that there is enough resin there so the seam will be closed, we are going to be using a really thick resin paste and apply it along the edge of our mold. The most important areas to cover are the areas where you think you won't be able to reach when the mold is closed, of course, though I tend to cover everywhere, just to be sure. You can, of course, discover where the areas you'll struggle to reach are when you test fit the mold halves together. Simply try to reach everywhere inside the mold when it's closed and identify where you can't reach or fit your arm slash hand. Once the entire edge has had the resin paste applied, and you only need to do this step to one of the halves, of course, and, and make sure it's the one that you're not going to flip upside down, you are ready to close the mold. Make sure you hold on to the inside of the mold since sometimes the silicone can fall out when flipped upside down. I have a hand on the inside of the mold when closing it as you can see. Initially, it's not going to seem like the two halves are all the way together, and that's because of the resin paste applied along the edge, and this is actually a good thing. With a little bit of force, you'll squeeze this resin out of the way, and the mold halves will close properly. If you use too much resin, this can become a problem, of course. Once closed, we want them to be held together, and this can be done multiple ways. The cheap way is to use packing tape. Make sure you are using packing tape, the brown kind, and not duct tape, since duct tape tends to stretch and become loose over time. If you have any class, you'll use bungee cords like me. Make sure they are applied evenly over the entire surface of the mold, and make sure the clamping pressure is not too intense. A big issue with open-edged molds is that there is nothing solid meeting along the edges, and so the soft silicone edge can be distorted if the two halves are pushed together too hard. I apply enough pressure to hold the two halves firmly together, but not so much that I'm straining myself to an excessive degree when attaching the bungee cords. You should be able to see along the outside seam if the silicone is distorting because of the pressure. Once closed and held together, we can work on the inside of the mold, and here there are two steps we must take. First, we must use a thick resin paste and try to make sure that the seams are filled from the inside, which we, of course, can visually inspect and see if there is resin along the seam, where the two mold halves meet. <laughs> 